Now, if you know me well, I'm a fan of all sorts of technology, not just Apple technology. I'm also a fan of Windows, I'm a fan of Android, you know, I'm a fan of Sony with the PlayStation, Xbox, so on. I'm a big fan of Nintendo too, and that's a little secret for another day. But I'm also a fan of small factor computers, just like this one I have right here. This is an Intel NUC or an Intel NUC, and basically it's a portable little computer as you can see here, but this one packs quite a punch and today I want to do an overview of why this little NUC is so cool and it's really really great but first of all let me show you a bit of the unboxing first of all so I've got here the Intel NUC and as you can see here if I tilt it up Intel NUC it's a really good box it's the NUC and it's also the 13th generation Intel inside it so this is the current the most up-to-date chipset inside this what's really really cool so let's lift up the small box and then inside, voila, there it is. So it's quite small. You can see to my hand how small this is. I'm just going to peel off this cellophane as well. Let's get that off. And you can see how small and dinky this really is. We've got some ports on the side. We've got fans and more ports on the back and everything like that. It's really, really cool. Let's see what else is also inside this box. So we've got a lot of paperwork and everything to read about and so on and so forth. And then let's see what else we've got underneath this tray here. Oh, we've got some more bits here. Let's lift that out. Double tray. Um, oh, this is opened up. So, oh, this is a backing plate here. So if you want to mount your NUC or you up to the back of, say, a monitor, you can use this. What's really, really awesome. So there must probably be some screws in here as well. But this looks like the power supply. Yep, that's our power supply just here. Let me get that out for you guys. So yeah, just a small, normal external power supply what goes into the back of the NUC there. And then inside here, if I can open up this one, what have we got in here? So, oh, we've got the other side of it. This is the UK power plug. Obviously, depending which country you're in, you get different ones. And there's also the screws, the ones I'm telling you about, to mount it onto the back of a monitor. So you've got everything in there. Let's see what's just underneath here. Is there anything in there? Oh, no, that's just empty there. So I absolutely loved that the box was nice and small and everything was, as it were, in a nice small package, as it were. But let's have a, now have a look at an overview of everything that we've got on this NUC. So starting with the front here, as you can see, we actually have two USB 3.2 ports on the very front. And we also have a headphone port as well. And also we have the power button. But after this, I flipped around the NUC and you can see here on the back, we have some more ports too. We've also got the traditional power port what's going in. We've also got HDMI 2.1 port. And you can see that correctly, guys. That is two Thunderbolt ports on the back too. There's also a standard USB 3.2. 2.2 and also just a USB 2 port as well and also there is another second HDMI port as well which is really really awesome. For overall size though you can see here it just fits into my hand it's basically about the size of my hand if I can show you here and looking back on my desk here you can see how portable and small this really really is compared to say a Mac mini I would say this is probably about a quarter of the size of a Mac mini maybe a little bit more thicker but overall it is tiny look like I said it just sits in my hand it is that that small the great thing is you can also upgrade it too so as you can see here i took off the bottom and inside it you can see we have actually upgradable ram inside this and actually this can be upgraded to 64 gigabytes of ddr4 ram at up to 3200 megahertz then also at the same time as well you can see i've got a one terabyte pci nvme we've also got another pci gen 4 slot here as well and then also just turning it around here if you do have a 2.5 drive like an SSD or even a spinny drive you can slot this in too to give you even more storage and to be honest that is pretty cool and like I said it is so small that we can fit all that storage inside and also we can stick that 64 gigabytes of RAM inside but you're probably wanting to know what about the chipset what chipset has this got inside it well as it's made by Intel you can gather it's got an Intel chipset inside it it's actually a 13th gen i7 and it's the 1360p 
This comes with 12 cores and 14 threads inside it, what is super, super impressive. It's got four times performance cores up to five gigahertz, and it's also got eight times efficiency cores up to 3.7 gigahertz. So if you've been watching my channel, you know, for example, like the M2 chipset or even the M2 Pro and the M2 Max and so on and so forth, they have efficiency cores and performance cores all in the same chipset. And this Intel 13th generation i7 basically has the same idea there too. And with that, some of you are probably wanting to know, well, what is the performance of this chipset? Well, let me connect up this NUC or NUC as some people call it, uh, to a keyboard, a mouse and a monitor. And let's do some benchmarks quickly to see how powerful this NUC is. So first of all, I decided to run Geekbench on here. So Geekbench 6. And as you can see here, we've got the full configuration. As you can see, we've got the Intel i7, 1360p chipset inside it, all the RAM and everything I've just spoke about. So let's get started then and doing a CPU test. So I let this run. And then after when it all completed, you can see the scoring here. And this scoring is really impressive. We can see here that the single core was 2,428 and the multi-core was 10,395. And if we compare that here, you can actually the see the MacBook Pro 14 inch. So this is the one that came out in 2021. We can see actually the multi-core is actually higher than this. What is super, super impressive. And also that the single core as well comes up higher than what we actually got with the M1 chipsets too. What is really really awesome as well the next benchmark i did after doing a geek bench was i did a cine bench test so with Cinebench all installed and everything, I began first of all with a multi-core test. Then afterwards, I decided to do the single core test afterwards. And as you can see here, with the results after everything had finished, it was super, super impressive. The multi-core score was 11,232 points. And then the single core score was 1,838 points. What again is super, super impressive indeed. Next of all, I decided to see how fast the SSD was inside. And as you can see here, I did a actual five gigabyte test and I ran this. And as you can see here, the write speed was about 2192. And then obviously the read speed was coming up a bit more fast, about 2950 ish sort of points, almost 3000 megabytes per second. What is super impressive for the SSD inside this machine. And easily, as you can see here, doing any sort of creators things up to 8K is no problems at all. Now, this NUC also has its own built-in graphics too. We're going to test out in a minute with some games and also we're going to test out doing some stuff in Adobe Premiere with some exports. But I did do a 3D Mark benchmark too to see how powerful it was. Now, you can see it is stuttering here with the frames per second, but obviously this is what it's all about, this benchmarking tool. It's pushing this GPU to its limits here. But again, after this is fully ran, you can actually see I've got the results here and it came in at 1,912. What is good, it's quite respectful for everything. And to be deadly honest, it can run some games and things like this, what I'll show you a little bit in a second. But for benchmarking, this is really, really a good score to get. So for the form factor, it is quite impressive what we can get from this NUC. But let's do some more real kind of tests now. This is what something I love to do because obviously benchmarks are all one thing, but we actually want to see what this NUC can really do for us. So the first thing what I did was I did a Premiere export of a 10 minute video and look at the result here and how long it took to export. Actually, a bit of a correction there. It actually was a 15 minute video that I'm deciding to export here. So if I just go to the export page, and as you can see here, I've got everything set up with H.264. It's like the most popular thing that most people export out, say, onto YouTube. And then obviously, I've also got a timer going as well. I'm going to count how long it takes to export. And I started the export process, started the stopwatch, as you can see here. And obviously, it took a bit of time. So what I decided to do, as you can see, I've sped up the video and in total, there we go. It took nine minutes, 41 seconds to export a 15 minute video in 4K and exporting it into H.264, what is quite impressive when you think about it. 
I also tested this NUC with Photoshop as well, um, fiddling around with raw files and things like this. It had no problems whatsoever. Obviously, if you had a super pro computer with a full on dedicated graphics card, you're going to get far more performance out of Photoshop. And also you're going to get far more performance, say, out of exporting a video in Adobe Premiere. But again, I will say it for the form factor and the size this machine is, it is pretty impressive what we're getting here. And in fact, let me show you some games next of all. And the first game I want to try out is quite a bit of a beastie one, and that is Cyberpunk. So knowing that Cyberpunk is quite a new game and a very demanding game, you can see here that I've actually changed the resolution down to 720p. Also, I turned on some of the Intel XES 1.1 sharpness bits and pieces as well to make the game work a little bit more better there. And obviously you can see all the other things I've set here. I've set them to sort of low, there's an odd bit of medium inside this in the videos and everything like this for the actual graphics and everything. Obviously ray tracing is turned off and obviously I applied that. And then obviously what I did next of all is I actually ran the benchmark and as you can see here obviously in the first sort of scene that we normally have was like the kind of bar scene obviously it's quite demanding here or just looking around but obviously when it went out into the city you can see here you can see the frames per second came up a little bit higher but then in total when it's completely finished you can see here that what we managed to get we managed to get around about 35 frames per second in total what isn't too bad for again for the size form factor of this actual little NUC that we have right here. And after doing Cyberpunk, I thought, what the hey, let's install GTA 5 and see how well that performs on here too. I think the main thing what you'll see here with GTA is actually I've set it to 1080p and 720p and actually I've actually turned everything up to ultimate settings on this benchmark that we're going to complete because obviously this game is like over 10 years old now. I can't believe that actually it's over 10 years old since GTA 5 came out but you can see here from the different sort of scenarios and everything we're actually getting near 60 frames per second what is really really impressive in fact actually it's probably more hovering in sort of the 50 sort of area it's probably in the sort of average i'd say probably between about 50 to 55 frames per second and remember like i said this is on ultimate settings and this is super super impressive to get this from this game and just to show you guys here i want to show you here look at this chart that i have here of the thermals this is Cinebench running again, as you can see here. And we've got obviously all the cores maxing out here, all the multi-cores inside it. And this is basically going to be using you know, the most of the speed and giving us most of the sort of temperatures from this chipset. And as you can see here as well, the fans were completely going mad on this one. But to be honest, not many of the chips or many of the cores, I should say, not the chips, are actually going above 80 degrees. Generally speaking, they're hovering around that sort of area. And then also for consumption, consumption of power for the CPU. Remember for this machine, this is where the main guts of everything is. We're only getting up to say about 40 watts of electricity being used. Again, what is super, super impressive for everything and especially that everything I've just shown you there of all the games and also Premiere Pro and things like this. Again, to just use around about 40 watts of power and then obviously the chipsets only to only get up to about 80 degrees in temperature thereabouts. Again, is really, really impressive. I know that's my key word here today impressive but i am really honestly impressed so this new nuc i've got it back now is really really impressive and if you possibly want to get your hands on one of these because at the end of the day if even if you had this as say as a sort of a streaming machine or something like this it is really really worthwhile getting and it's really really impressive too and in fact geekcom are selling it right now and also they got a summer sale on right now and if you put this code in on their website what i'm displaying right now up until the 28th of August, you can get 30% off. And I'll also be putting this code and the link to Geekcom in my description below. So do check that out. So overall, guys, I am really, really impressed with this NUC. And I'm going to be keeping it for a good while because I love it. I think it's really, really good and really powerful for what it is. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also, if you want to hear the latest Apple news and technology news, reviews and comparisons, Comparisons, please also make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye bye.